this really stinks. Oh, I'd leave it where you found it, Sal. Were you and Danny ever close when you were kids? Not really. I was a few years younger. He liked to boss me around. What was he like as a kid? Athletic. Good at everything. He was a really top-class cricketer. My parents thought he was wonderful. And they weren't so keen on you. What makes you say that? Oh, just an idea I got. It's sort of like Dad was with me and Samantha, only it's ten times worse when it's your twin. You keep asking yourself why you're so different when really you're just the same. I never shone like Danny did. My parents did their best to love me anyway. And Danny gave you a hard time? Oh, not exactly. But we were never close. Not like Tom and him are. No, not like that. But didn't that ever bug you? I mean, them being so close and you being sort of left out of it? No, oh, why should it? Anyway, I would never have met Tom if it hadn't been for Danny. You! Yeah. Bobby yeah. said I could find you in here. I uh, suppose the men are... In the house. You shouldn't go in. Oh, why ever not? I'll just pop in and say hello to your brother. I wouldn't. I... Yeah, why don't you do that? Well, I'll only stay a minute. Hi. You're a stir. <laughs> Another one bites a dust. They're hopeless. It was only 10 o'clock and they're already getting drunk. They wouldn't even let me in to get any breakfast. I've never seen Tom like that before. You ever heard the phrase, the one day of the year? No. Well, it's their one day of the year. If you'd been where they'd been and done what they'd done, you wouldn't begrudge it. I guess I don't, but I just wanted to sit down and eat my breakfast where I normally sit down and eat my breakfast. Yeah, well, Tom's war record's pretty special, you know that, don't you? Yeah, Frank told me about it. The big joke is Fisher's been rabbiting on to everyone about Tom being a coward, making a real nong of himself. Well, why'd he say that? Oh, he just jumped to the wrong conclusion about something that Tom said. Didn't you tell him? He'll find out. The more he talks, the sillier he's going to look in the end. Well, I'm going to tell him. Oh, I'll leave it go for a while, eh? He'll find out soon enough. No way! I want to see the look on his face when he does. He mightn't believe it coming from you anyway. So I'll make sure he does. Me and my big mouth. You said it. There we all were, us girl guides, out in the bush miles from anywhere, and Potty trod on a snake. Her real name was Gloria Potter, but we called her Potty. She let out a terrible shriek. I've never heard anything quite like it. The snake got more of a fright than Potty did, I'm sure. <laughs> Just passing through, guys. Say, the snake took off in one direction, and Potty took off in the other. <laughs> Poor girl, she ran right into a swamp and it was full of leeches and the leeches started popping all over her legs and she started yelling louder and louder. Oh, poor Potty, she looked quite a sight. I've never heard anything quite like it. Oh, Potty, what a sight she did look like. for the afternoon. I'm just after a few things. I've got some friends coming over. Um, if you'd like to join us. Yeah, I'm but... sorry. Alf's already asked me. Oh. Oh. Hey, can't you read? Won't take a minute. I saw your car outside. Did you? It's private. You've got two minutes. I don't like your tone, young lady, and I use the term loosely. I hear you've been saying things about Tom. Do you? Yeah. You know what that is? Yes, of course I know what it is. It's Tom's. And you want to know something else? You've made an even bigger idiot of yourself than you normally do. memories with those nights singing around the campfire. Roll out the barrel and pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile. 
here's a story that might interest you, Miss Stewart. It's about the war. No, I don't think she'd be interested in that, mate. Oh, yes, I'd love to hear it. Um, as long as it's not too uh, ribald. <laughs> oh, I definitely wouldn't call it ribald. Danny. My platoon was on patrol, nothing special, pretty routine stuff. And we were walking through this paddy field. Yes. And this young bloke put his foot on a mine. All right, Danny, that's enough. I agree. No, 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 Miss Stewart's interested. She said so. You see, uh, a mine won't go off until you take your foot off, release the pressure, with me? Yes. Anyway, the uh, young bloke just stood there and he froze like a rabbit does in a spotlight. And uh, we tried to figure out some way to hold the catch down while he slid his foot off. And plenty of mugs who volunteered to do it, including me. But it was uh, like the young bloke couldn't hear what was being said to him. He just stood there, this strange look on his face, not listening, not responding. And then, quite casually, he just uh, took his foot off. Just took it off. Hey, what happened? He got blown to bits. Oh. It's as if he wanted to die. Excuse me. Told you I'd get rid of her. Women can't take it. Her fiance was killed in Vietnam by a mine. Oh, come on, sis. It's okay. You'll be right as rain in a minute. <laughs> Look, why don't you make yourself scarce for a while? Enough. <laughs> Come on. It's all right. <laughs> How was I supposed to know? I told you to cut it out. It was just bad luck I hit on that particular story, that's all. Yeah, very bad luck. Oh, well, things are tough all round. I often think of that young bloke. I reckon he did the sensible thing. He's not stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. People who go around saving other people's lives ought to be very careful. Oh, yeah. Doesn't do to go around saving ungrateful swine. Well, I forgive you. Well, here's for another tinny, eh? Come on. We would have been married the following autumn at Easter. I always wanted to be an Easter bride. It was going to be his last tour of duty. And we were going to buy that little wooden house that looked out over the bay. The one that was just on the road outside of town. It's all run down now. Some epitypes. Yes, yes, I, I know the one. It was beautiful then. Three bedrooms. Plenty of room for children. <laughs> he was such a good man. A very good man. The night before he left, he wanted to make love to me. I think he felt something. I think he... He thought it might be the only time... And I said, no. <laughs> we were well brought up, you see. I, I, I didn't think I should, not if, not if I wasn't married. I often wish if I could just have that night back. Just that one night. <laughs> That's, that's my engagement ring. I keep it in a drawer all year. But on Anzac Day, I take it out and I wear it. But just for the day. 